I certainly hope so. Yep. I get, I get multiple notifications. Well, you should get you should get notifications from YouTube, from Facebook, multiple Facebook accounts. I get like. Uh, do you still have the other one active? Like. Which other? Which get, other one? Like the other service active. I get. Share faith. Yeah. I get, no. This one, and I get like multiple of the same different type. <clears throat> so all the, all the ones that you see on the Melon account, if you subscribe to them, you should get notifications from them. But some of them you probably don't subscribe to, like um, Twitter or Subsplash. You can't really subscribe to that. Um, so God streams, Jesus saves, uh, my Facebook church facebook that's four and then there's two different youtubes yeah. there's mine and the churches so that's six so there's actually eight platforms that we stream to so. so hopefully somebody can find us somewhere somehow <laughs> uh all right we'll get started in one minute that last minute was a long minute wasn't it i'd said that and Cindy goes I hope that she was reading something and it it wasn't wasn't my statement. Ah. Yes. We will be in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 3 as a starting point. Let us begin with a word of prayer. Father, thank you so much that we can come together in your house, that we can dive into your word, that we can sharpen one another, and Lord, that we can worship you. We give you all the glory in Jesus' precious and holy name, and all God's people said, amen. All right. Second Thessalonians chapter 1, beginning in verse 3. We ought always to give thanks to God for you, brethren, as is only fitting, because your faith is greatly enlarged, and the love of each one of you toward one another grows ever greater. So, I think that that's a great verse that applies in a wonderful way to community church, because this is the most loving church I've ever had the joy to be associated with. Um, and I do believe that our love is continuing to grow, and uh, that is a wonderful thing, uh, grows ever greater. So, verse 4, Therefore, we, ought, we ourselves speak proudly of you among the churches of God for your perseverance and faith in the midst of all your persecutions and afflictions which you endure. So, yes, sir. What does that therefore mean? Oh, you know, you just... You just you're goading me, aren't you? It's there for a reason because of what we what was just before this. Therefore, there for a reason. Um, and apparently the, the church of Thessalonica was going through a lot of persecution at this time and their faith didn't falter and they had um, grown to love one another even more and they were enduring it all. So we don't face a whole lot of persecution here in America, but we do face some persecution. So what, what kind of persecution can a devoted Christian run into in America today? On social media. Social media, yeah. People will attack you on Facebook. They will. Yes, sir. You take you get, you get persecution in the United States, even trying to get a job. Yeah, getting a job can... can they, t they told me I couldn't get a job at... Uh, what was that... That sandwich, special sandwich place, but I'd have to take the Ten Commandments off the back of the car. And I said, no. Yeah. Yeah. They even tell you what you can and cannot wear. Um, can't wear that cross. The jacket that you wear that has Jesus on the back of it, don't wear it in the store. Tell you to take your Ten Commandments sticker off the back of your car. Yes, Jerry. Schools. Yeah. In school. Colleges. Yeah. College is the worst. Uh, college is. Um, Many professors make it their goal to uh, uh, guide you away from your faith. They think it's a, a waste. 
So uh, Pastor Tom posted something interesting on Twitter this morning. Um, he posted, there are no atheists in hell. <laughs> you can look at that in two different ways. You can say, well, you know, atheists don't go to hell. Or you could say, as soon as they get to hell, they aren't atheists anymore <laughs> because they know there is a God. Um, <clears throat> all right. So if you were to follow the timeline of what it takes to get to hell, um, they would have a face to face with Jesus before they got cast to where they belong. So <laughs> there is a come to Jesus meeting for every atheist. All right. Um, Dan, yes. they, I thought you were supposed to boast. And he's and he he boasts and that like that is that the way he's uh, using it? We are to not boast in anything except for Jesus, and he's boasting in their love in the church in Christ. So I think he's okay. Okay. Yeah, but that's a good that's a good good call. All right. What um, while we're on the subject of persecution, what do you think, Pastor Tom and I had this conversation just the other day. What do you think is the next big persecution that Christians are going to face in America. Go ahead, Jerry. Supreme Court. What is that? Praying what? The Supreme Court. Supreme judgments. Court. You got it. You got to be more specific. Well, they're making some very tough decisions right now, and if it goes the wrong way, and be more specific. It, it, well, such as abortion. Abortion. Yeah, and they made that decision long ago. So I mean, you know they. They're just dealing with the same thing. It's, what, kill, it's killing about, kids. Right. Writing something and trying to get it published. Writing and publishing. Fortunately, there is self-publishing. So you can you can publish anything you want if you want to spend the money to do it. Um, Robbie said burning Bibles. I think we're a long ways away from that. I don't think that'll happen until the um, tribulation period. Um, it, has, it, it happened in many countries previously, uh, but... That's kind of gone by the wayside Be because there are 30 billion Bibles distributed. I think that's the number by the Gideons every year. <laughs> that's that's going to be a, a big uh, endeavor. I, I think another I think another thing, Dan, is the churches are being deceived and uh, they're 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 getting away from the real true gospel. I think there's a lot of truth in that, Jerry. I think yeah. that happens a lot, and and that is persecution from the devil within the church. Absolutely. So I think um, if we look at Canada, for instance, the law that they passed against Christianity. Um, not being able to preach the truth of the word of God because they will label it as hate speech, hate speech. If you preach the word of God, you're preaching hate speech because the Bible speaks out against homosexuality, against all kinds of sin. And most um, non-believers don't want to hear what they do be called sin. Uh, so there's that. I think probably in America, one of the next big persecutions the church will face is um, not having tax exemptions. Um, and that's an easy one to slip in. And most churches will fail, falter and close their doors because they won't be able to. A lot of churches can barely afford to pay the light bill right now. Um, <clears throat> because their churches are dying. They, they, uh, for whatever reason, you know, if you've got a, a building that's paid for and it sits on an acre of land and you've got 30 people coming to church, um, you can, you can probably pay your light bill. But if that, uh, that bill comes in for a real estate tax, that might be a different story. So we'll just have to wait and see. Yes, sir. Uh, it would it would have to be spread across the boards to all religious. Yeah, I, I don't think that they'll be able to just point to Christianity. They'll 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 spread it out across the board. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Support. You tolerate. Yeah. Um, and that might be it. That might be how the unification of all religions starts to take place um, because that's one of the Antichrist's goals. 
uh, that may be how that starts. So it serves a dual purpose to the Antichrist, to evil. Dan, I thought at one time they was trying to pass a bill that you couldn't, for charitable donations, had to be over $10,000. Well, they, that changes from um, president to president. Yeah. You know, sometimes, uh, and it just depends on if it's um, Republican or Democrat, and, you know, they'll... They'll say, you donate $200 or more, you can write it off on your taxes. And then it'll get changed with the next presidency, uh, $10,000 or more, and you can claim it on your taxes. And then, you know, so it just, it varies. Um, and, and there's not one um, Republican or Democrat that's better than the other on that, because I've seen each one of them do good and each one of them do bad. It just, just depends on who's making those decisions. Um, but what we give should not be determined by whether or not we can claim it on our taxes. You know, we give because we're giving to God. It has nothing to do with the state um, or the country. All right, let's continue on. Am I in verse four or five? Five. Five. This is a plain indication of God's righteous judgment so that you may be considered worthy of the kingdom of God for which indeed you are suffering. So Paul the Apostle is telling the church of Thessalonica that facing persecution is part of God's judgment and it shows um, of your worthiness to be a part, be called a part of the kingdom of God. The suffering um, is... Um, expected and it's good how about that i don't like that do you like that i don't like to suffer but if suffering is what it takes and it's part of god's plan then indeed that's what we'll do you know i mean, you, i i wonder why some people suffer so very much with pain and with disease and with mental illness and with migraines and with all the different things that people suffer with. Um, and for, for some, it's part of God's plan that that suffering teaches them and, and molds them. So, so that, that's only found in Christianity. <laughs> you, don't, you don't really find that anywhere else. All right, verse 6. For after all, it is only just, it is only just for God to repay with affliction those who afflict you. Oh, okay. So somebody persecutes you, God's going to take care of it. God will God'll take care of it. You, have, you ever heard or me say or others say, yeah, I know a guy. He'll take care of it. <laughs> yeah. Um, back in the old days, you would uh, repay evil with evil. But we don't do that anymore, do we? We let God take care of our our uh, work for us on that level. Verse 7, And to give relief to you who are afflicted, and to us as well, when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with His mighty angels in flaming fire. And we're going to stop right there. Um, where might we also find that in Scripture? Now, if you have a cross-references on the side, there's several different places where you can find references to that in Scripture. What event is that? If we were just going to round it all off and not give scriptural references and chase references, what event is Paul talking about? Well, Revelation is a book. Armageddon is an event where God judges humanity. Um, but if, if we're going to look at specifically, it says revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire. Has that happened yet? No. When does that happen? After. Excuse me? After the tribulation. It does happen after the tribulation, at the end of the tribulation period, at the second coming of Christ. If he hasn't done this yet, and he's going to appear in heaven with his mighty angels then that would be the second coming of Christ when he appears in the clouds and comes back. And there's a whole series of events that scriptures tell us about 
that are um, wrapped up in that. Continuing on verse 8, dealing out retribution, there's your key, to those who do not know God and to those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus. Okay. Judgment Day. That's a little bit further, but um, if you're looking at a timeline of events, we are here pre prior to the rapture. Rapture happens next. First three and a half years of the tribulation period, and then the second three and a half years of the tribulation period, seven years, followed by the return of Christ, appearing in the air, coming down to judge those who do not believe and do not follow the Gospels. That sets off the beginning of a thousand-year reign of Christ physically, bodily, on earth, followed by followed by um, the uh, ending of the thousand-year reign of Christ when Satan is released for a little while and uh, those who rebel again, Gog and Magog, North, and they, they, they are judged again. Then you have Revelation chapter 20, the great white throne judgment. After that, you have the new heavens, new earth. So we are way back here prior to the rapture. But Paul is telling them that God is going to take vengeance for them and he's going to pay the penalty. These folks will pay the penalty of eternal destruction. How, what one four letter word would you label eternal destruction? H E double hockey, hockey sticks, which is hell. Okay. Hell, Hades, all, all of those terms, the lake of fire. Um, so they're going to uh, be cast away from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of His power, verse 9. So um, those who do not obey the gospel of the Lord Jesus. What is the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ? The Bible is a really lame answer. I'm sorry, Robbie. I mean, you know, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ can be found in four books of the Bible. And it, it specifically talks about what? Love, salvation, repentance, um, who Jesus is, faith, yeah. Um, repentance. So when we read one of the Gospels, and, and I would recommend you read them all, one at a time, um, when we read the Gospel, we find out who Jesus is, why He came, why He taught what He taught, what He taught, and uh, what we are to do with it. And then we learned that He went to the cross for us, that He died for us, that He was the perfect a sacrifice from God, the only begotten Son of God who shed His perfect blood for us so that we might find um, forgiveness of sin and acceptance into heaven. So it's, it's a lot there, but you know any good story is going to have a, a, a lot to it. And this gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ is what we preach, it's what we teach, it's what we learn, it's what we live by, it's who... Christ is and what He has done. All right. Um, verse 10. When He comes to be glorified in His saints on that day, second coming, appearing in the clouds, who have believed, that's you and me, for our testimony to you was believed. He's talking about how his testimony to the church of Thessalonica led them to believe and who they are as a church is being spread out to all uh, the surrounding cities and, and communities. That's what we are supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be spreading the good news of Jesus Christ. Verse 11. To this end also we pray for you always that our God may count you worthy of your calling and fulfill every desire for goodness and the work of faith with power. Now, there's a lot in that verse. Um, 
everything that we read from 3 through 10 is giving us a description of how we may be found worthy of our calling. So what have we talked about? That um, we love, verses 3 and 4, uh, that we endure and persevere under uh, persecution, that um, we believe and follow the gospel of Jesus Christ, that uh, we will be with Him in the air when He returns, um, and fulfill every desire for goodness. So being good, although it's not a good enough to get you to heaven, being good is a result, it's a byproduct of being born again. And the work of faith. That's what we do. That is preaching the gospel. Jerry? It is their responsibility to provide evidence of their relationship with Jesus Christ. All right, let's talk about that for a second, since that's right out of the, the uh, Sunday school lesson. Um, if you were drug into court, and it's a, a, a hostile court, and they're going to find you guilty or innocent of being a Christian, a blood-bought, born-again believer, what evidence can the prosecuting attorney find against you that you are a blood-bought, born-again believer? You profess to be a Christian. That's, that's first of all. You're not denying it. You're not standing there saying, not me, not me. Oh, no, no, no. You are saying, yes, I am a believer. Yep. Go, all right. Um, your microphone's not working, so I'm, 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 I'm trying to... I'm trying to get you going. So you show up for church. Is that right, Jerry? You show up for Bible study. You show up for church. Um, so that's partial evidence. Although, you know, anybody could say, oh, my wife made me go. You know, my husband made me go. My mama made me go. I wouldn't be there if it weren't for them. What else? Well, then this is saying your work produced by your faith. You, you have to go out and do something for the Lord. Thank you, sir. You cannot be a couch Christian and do nothing. Now, if you were homebound and physically unable to go to church, then they might find other evidences, perhaps your social media, perhaps your um, checkbook, perhaps um, what mail you receive, perhaps... Uh, the um, history on your computer of could, what you watch. It could be the way you talk also. The way you talk, yep. There would be people to, who they could bring into court to testify against you and say, ah, Jerry shared the word of God with me. He witnessed to me. He tried to, he tried to proselytize me and make me a Christian. See, so there, there are evidences of being a Christian. And now the next phrase here is uh, when it says work of faith with power. This is, this is interesting because the work of the Holy Spirit within you with power. Not a lot of people are going to say, yep, yep, I've seen the Holy Spirit work within me with power. And by the way, that Greek word is dynamos, which is where we get the word dynamite. Are you a dynamite Christian? Um, has God wrought any miracles through you? Has he answered any prayers through you? See, now there's a good one because many of us can say, oh, yep, God has answered prayers through me. There's power in prayer. Um, you know, sharing, sharing your testimony, um, witnessing to people, having a positive effect on people's lives in a powerful way. Uh, so that word power there kind of really nails it down. Let's look at the last verse, verse 12. In order, or so that, 
the name of our Lord Jesus may be glorified in you and you in him according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. That's a great uh, kind of summation. Bob? I would say something like, if you're laying there in a hospital like Gordon is, is going to be operated on, and he said next Wednesday and everything, you could uh, give a testimony to the doctors and the nurses. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so this verse makes me think about, um, in order that the name of our Lord Jesus may be glorified in you and you in him, according to the grace. All right, so why do you come to church? Why do you come to church? Ellen pointed up. Uh, all right, so uh, to feed your soul, to worship God. Our spiritual obligation to honor Christ, to honor Christ, to be associated with like believers. Yep. That all of those things are biblical. All those things are in scripture. Somebody else had something. To build your relationship with God. All right. So <clears throat> all good answers. All right answers. Um, church exists to glorify God, to worship God. You come to church to glorify God, to worship God. As a byproduct, you grow closer to Christ. Um, you fulfill your obligation from Scripture. You, uh, you, you grow one another. You sharpen one another. Uh, you, your words of profession help somebody else who needs to hear that you sit under the teaching of the word of god you participate in praise and worship songs you bring your offering um to the lord you um what am i missing here anything um i think i've covered most of it key number one you come to worship your god that is the key if you come to church out of simply obligation, not obligation to the scripture, but let's say you have an obligation to your spouse. Okay, I'd rather sleep in, but I'm going to go. You know, that's not a good enough reason. Now, if you're an adult and you're dragging children to church, that's okay. Because you're the adult and they don't get to make decisions about their spirituality until they're released from your care. You can't make them go to the church when they're adults. I was going to say another one. When I go to like believers and testify to them and tell them what God has done for me, it, may, it encourages somebody. Yes, yes. And, and people lose sight of the fact that Sometimes when we go to church and we're there and we have the simplest of conversations that we don't think really matters, we might be saying something that that individual needed to hear to get them through the day, get them through the week, reconnect them with Christ. Um, iron sharpens iron. Some, you know, sometimes we don't go to church just for us, but we go to church for others. You know, there is a, a philosophy within the American society that is called Wiffum. Wiffum. What's in it for me? Well, that should not be a philosophy that we use to attend church. And many people who come to church with a what's in it for me attitude walk away with nothing because it's not about you. It's about God. And it's about worshiping God. Um, he may bless you. He may fill you. He may teach you. He may change your spirit, your attitude. But that's not why you go. You go to glorify God. Um, verse 12, in order that the name of our Lord Jesus may be glorified in you and you in him, according to the grace of our God, and the Lord Jesus Christ. So, 
I'm preaching to the choir, so to speak, because you all are here voluntarily, early, before worship, and that's wonderful. That's great. We have people watching online. Some of them can't get here for this, but they'll watch online, and then they show up for for the worship service. That's great. That's wonderful. There are people who cannot show up to church at all. Physically, they can't do it. That's one of the reasons we broadcast and we live stream for those folks. And, and that's great. That's good. Um, they have uh, the same ability to glorify God where they are. Now, if you were to decide, and I'm going to end after this, if you were to decide, well, they live stream, I don't have to go. I could just watch online at home. But you have every ability to go. Are you... Are you cheating God? Because you could be there. It's, it's kind of like, well, I, I could take my wife out on a date, but instead of doing that, I'm just going to have, um, have a meal sent over to her while I am at the office, and I'll call and talk to her for a few minutes. It's not the same, is it? Uh, so I, I think we need to keep in mind what it means to go to church, why we go to church, that we glorify our God, and those that cannot go, um, that they make every effort to uh, be in a deeper state of worship and prayer than we probably are. Um, so, all right, let me close this with a word of prayer. Father, thank you so much for all my brothers and sisters in Christ, those who are here live and those who are watching live online. I pray that you bless them, uh, you encourage them, Lord. And help us to minister to one another in Jesus' precious and holy name. And all God's people said, Amen. Thank you so much.